Hey everybody, welcome back to another Create tutorial. Today we're going to go over the ruler option for the assistant tools, which is kind of a weird but cool little tool option. <laughs> so as always, make sure you have your assistant tool selection on and go to your tool options. And go down to ruler. So this is just two points. It looks pretty normal. It looks boring. It looks like the infinite ruler and parallel ruler. Nothing really going on except in the options. We got a couple different things we can do. We can do subdivisions. We can do minor subdivisions. We can basically make a ruler. Now, whether or not you want this to be accurate to inches or not is totally up to you. If you have your rulers on and you right click on them, you can go to inches. So let's say we're gonna put this dot here. This is not gonna be perfectly straight. Let's see. Take this out. I'm gonna try really hard to make this accurate. That's about one inch. So we can do six subdivisions, but if we want to expand here, I go up to 11. There we go. So we have some rulers. And if you want to have minor subdivisions, you can add these. So now it's really like a ruler. So we're gonna go to the brush tool Make sure our snap to assistance is on and we can start making our lines just like the parallel rulers. So what's nice about this though is if we're doing something that needs to be very specific in terms of spacing, it doesn't have to be like accurate to your life spacing, but if you um, want to make a bookshelf or something and you want to make sure the books are each three points away from each other, make sure I have this, there we go try to make it so you can see here so we can say all right so it's one two three four points and we can put two in between them then one two three four again put two in between them that's five one two three four and do this again you can see how this is kind of helpful so you're making sure this is perfectly accurate you're not relying on the grids and guides up here like you can go ahead and get one of these in here but that's it's paying the butt to line up with the ruler on top so by doing this you don't have to worry about that and it snaps automatically to this ruler so you kind of save yourself some headaches and some time and that's pretty much it we've got our dashes so this is only horizontal just so you know and then we can go ahead and move this down and then we can say, all right, so we have this space in between. We want to mark that with a different color. We can use this red here. And we know that it's every, every space in between. Oops. You can see how easy this is. I don't have to worry about, is the spacing correct? Who knows, but it is because we just did the hard work. Kind of get a little cross-eyed, but that's fine. So that's like a really nice and easy way to make dash lines. And if you're making a street stuff, um, whether textures or um, the dash lines in the road and stuff like that, this is a really easy way to do that without going, oh my gosh, how do I do this? You know, because I know we can always do a shift line and then erase in between. But this gives you a little bit more... Um, consistency so now that we've got that we can do something else with this tool we can do a fixed length so if we want to go to inches and actually make it accurate we can set this to 12 and it's going to fit the whole of the canvas so now this should be just about one inch it's still not perfect there we go it's a little better but that's pretty close. So this length of the ruler will be 12 inches. So even though we take the subdivisions down, it will always be 12. So if I actually can't even go and shrink this, I can move it, but I can't shrink it. See, I can move it here, I can change the angle, but I can't actually change the size anymore because I gave it a fixed length. And you can change this to uh, millimeters, points, inches, centimeters, to, is it? It's not decimeters. Is it decimeters? Pixels? 
Um, all this other fun stuff. I don't know. I don't remember what these are. <laughs> but that's a bunch of stuff that you can do for the ruler. So if you like the infinite and parallel ruler, but you need a little bit more um, control and you need a little bit more specifics in what you're doing, this is a good option. The only downfall is you can't really draw outside the line, like the infinite ruler, or the parallel ruler, rather. But it's still pretty cool. And this also helps too, like if you need to measure something real quick, like let's say you're doing some character sheets and you're like, okay, I need this to be... I'm going to turn this off real quick. Make that straight. Alright, we know that this canvas is... Um, 8 by 12 inches. On the character sheet here, I need to make sure each character is within a certain range. So we can say it needs to be 6 inches long. Oops. Right? So now we have the height of the character and the ground plane where they need to be. And then from there, I can make sure that when I go to draw, I can say here's the head, here's the feet, blah, 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 blah. You know, and I know how that, how the exact height that needs to be on the paper. And that's it for the ruler option. Hopefully this video was helpful and you learned something new and you're able to incorporate this into your own work. I think this is very helpful, especially if you're doing print later on and you need something very specific or you're trying to keep in mind how much space something will take up on your page. Very, very helpful tool. And you don't need to mess with these silly guides here because they get in the way a lot. They, well, at least I think they do, <laughs> even if I lock them. They're not perfect. They're good to have, but uh, this ruler option will definitely be more helpful. Thank you guys for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to like and don't forget to subscribe so you can um, get to, or catch the next videos. And I will see you in the next one.